You know, I don't really hate Trump. I hate Trump supporters. It's like how I don't hate the Toronto Maple Leafs or Doctor Who or BTS. I just hate their fans. Politics have always invited the same type of fandom that sports, nerdy TV shows, and K-pop now have. A bunch of overly passionate mouth breathers defending their thing, even when it's not rational to do so. Using a lot of we statements when they shouldn't. Personally attacking others who don't like the thing that they like or who they disagree with. The difference is, with Twitter, everyone has a platform to say whatever stupid shit they want when they didn't years ago. And hey, the First Amendment gives you the right to say almost whatever stupid shit you want, and they can't throw you in jail for it. But that's pretty much where the protections end for the First Amendment, despite everyone thinking they should get more out of it. The First Amendment guarantees your right to free speech. To say shit like, Hillary basically voted to kill brown babies in the Middle East, or Trump might be a date rapist. You can't go to jail for that. What it doesn't give you is the right to be heard, or to force others to hear you. Or does it? Last year, a lawsuit was filed against Donald Trump, with accusers saying that their constitutional rights were infringed when the president blocked them on Twitter. This is from a story done by NPR, posted on November 7th, 2017. I'll use my NPR voice for this. One of the plaintiffs in the suit is Philip Cohen, a sociology professor at University of Maryland. Just like President Trump and 14-year-old Taylor Swift fans, Cohen likes to tweet. He saw an opportunity to express himself to the president by tweeting to the account at real Donald Trump. I noticed right away that his Twitter feed was a place that people congregated and exchanged views, he says. So that was the place to go to express myself. Man, he noticed it right away that people tweet at Trump and then get into fights with each other in the thread? Oh, he should quit his job as a professor to become a detective. His skills are clearly going to waste. Cohen has a verified account on Twitter. That's when you have a following, and they confirm you are who you say you are. That means his tweets got to the top of the president's feed. Cohen set up an alert so that he could know when President Trump tweeted. If I replied right away, I could get lucky and have a lot of people read my tweets, he says. But then, one day, the president blocked him. Cohen was surprised. He says he wasn't trolling the president. I was basically civil, he says. I didn't use a lot of profanity. I didn't harass people individually. I mostly made graphical memes with slogans on them like corrupt, incompetent, and authoritarian. Man, he was surprised that the president didn't want to read memes, plural, calling him corrupt and incompetent that didn't use a lot of profanity? Cohen says once he was blocked, his tweets about the president reached fewer people, so he believes the blocking is censoring his ability to criticize the government. That is fucking absurd. If someone blocks you on Twitter, that means they can't see your tweets and you can't tweet to them. But you can still tweet about them, and you can still tweet to other people who want to listen. This might be the most childish thing I've ever heard a professor say or do. A university professor is like, Yeah, I set up an alert so I could know when the president was tweeting, so I could be one of the first people to reply to him with memes in the hopes that the most people would see them. But I wasn't trolling. That is trolling! Repeatedly harassing someone online? That's exactly what that is. You're not looking for a discussion. Posting a name-calling meme on a tweet is the digital version of breaking a bottle on a bar top and pointing it at someone you're angry at. You've declared you're not looking for a civil discussion, you're looking for a fight. And setting an alert so you can be the first to post your stupid memes? It's no different than the losers who subscribe to me just to give my videos thumbs down, or to call me a cuck or whatever, but stay subscribed even though they hate my work. And guess what? If they get banned from my channel, which I don't even think you can do anymore, their right to free speech isn't hindered. They can go anywhere else and call me a cuck. They can do it on their Facebook pages. They can make a YouTube video about it. They can go post about it on Reddit. They can tweet to their six followers. They can stand on a street corner and go, Hey everybody, Buckley from A Dose of Buckley is a huge cuck. He just loves being cuckolded. And he's Canadian, so he probably lets a hockey playing moose do it. And there's absolutely nothing anyone can do. But nowhere is it written that someone has to listen. 
The First Amendment says this, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. And Congress has not made any laws of this nature. The president just doesn't want to listen to people call him corrupt over and over. Even if it's true, can you blame him? And so, here's the funny part. A few days ago, a judge suggested this whole thing could be over if the president agreed to just mute people. When you mute someone, you no longer see their tweets, but they can see yours and reply to you. And they don't know that they're muted. I mute people all the time. And according to the BBC, lawyers on both sides said that they would consider muting as a possible solution to the lawsuit. That's my BBC voice. So, if they would consider that as a solution, they agree that the president does not have to listen to everyone's shit on him. Which ultimately means that the president not reading your tweets does not violate the First Amendment. So, what difference does it make if he mutes you or blocks you? Either way, you're not being heard. Which again, you don't have a right to in the first place. And none of this takes into account the fact that Twitter is a private service. They're not Congress. They can make all the fucking rules they want about what you can and can't say on there. And they do. And they don't enforce them very evenly. But blocking someone isn't censorship. I mean, what's next? Oh, my views are dropping. I'm being censored. YouTube, force all of my nearly 600,000 subscribers to watch my videos. Make them do it. Autoplay my videos on their phones at full blast the moment they're uploaded. And if they unsubscribe, I should be allowed to sue them. They have to listen to me. Everyone does. Yeah, great. He's the president, and he's a fucking idiot who keeps a personal and public Twitter feed where he tweets about Alec Baldwin at five in the morning. So because of this, he has to let you reply to him? I don't fucking think so. Here's another quote from Professor Meme. Very quickly I realized that a lot fewer people were seeing my tweets, and my political efficacy, my ability to speak to my fellow citizens, was impaired by that. Fuck your efficacy. Nothing's impaired. You can post all the memes you want. And, pro tip, you can log out of Twitter and go search him to see his posts. You can take screen caps of them, post them on your Twitter feed, and reply to that. You have the right to free speech. You don't have the right to a free audience.